Yo, this is Alex Mouth of Destiny, and today I'm bringing you my complete review on the Bells of Steel Bell Squat Machine. I'll be covering general benefits and programming of belt squats, advantages of this machine over a DIY setup, followed by some specs. So let's begin by answering a simple question. What's the point of doing bell squats in the first place? Essentially, it's the same movement pattern as a barbell back squat, but the weight is being loaded through the hips rather than the back. This eliminates compressive forces on the spine, along with stressing the upper and lower back musculature. The torso is also more upright and does not assist in leveraging. So what you'll find is that bell squats are harder than barbell back squats because it's only your quads, adductors, and glutes that actually do real work. And you can't compensate by hinging. It's straight up brute force, low skill, and all legs. In this way, bell squats allow for quality lower body volume in a way that's extremely specific to barbell squats. The carryover is basically one to one when doing both, and that's a big deal considering they're incredibly easy to recover from. In this way, bell squats can be used to complement normal squat training or replace them for hypertrophy only purposes. For me, I incorporate them for accessory work and on their own day to which no back squats are done. So on day one, I'll do heavy back squats followed by back off sets, and bell squats may be the third exercise as opposed to doing hack squats or leg presses. Alternatively, I can go heavy on back squats or deadlifts then immediately go into bell squats for reps, which is typically three sets of eight to 12 or three sets of 15 to 20. Then for day two, it's exclusively bell squats. And if I need even more volume, then I'll add a unilateral exercise like a split squat or favor 60 squats and leg extensions for the rec fem. As you can see, the objective is to always blend your system. That's how you'll feel less beat up and be able to push higher intensities for much longer. Not only for the legs, but for any axial loading exercise since there's less muscular overlap. Anyway, those are the major points about belt squatting. Let's now compare the best DIY setup to using the Bells of Steel machine. Firstly, it's a lot safer and easier to do since there's no awkward step up or struggling to get up and down, which is difficult with heavier weights and potentially dangerous. You can strain a knee, adductor, ankle, or oblique, given the asymmetrical loading with weights that were selected for bilateral work. This explains why even elite squatters generally cap their loads to around five to seven plates, because going higher becomes risky, whereas the machine is never problematic, even if squatting those exact amounts or above. You just stand up, adjust your feet if needed, squat, then re-rack by pushing the bar forward. The start and end is literally the easiest part, so you'll never be afraid of adding more weight or getting hurt. From day one to infinity, the setup is efficient and safe. Secondly, the DIY version is extremely restrictive in its range of motion and foot stance. You're forced to use a wider stance for the waist to clear, and 90% of the time you'll be squatting right at parallel or slightly below, which isn't bad in absolute sense, but inferior for individual variability and stimulus to fatigue. Whereas the machine allows for any foot positioning and was literally designed for maximum squatting range of motion in mind. The default style is squatting way below parallel and even hitting ATG. That's superior for hypertrophy and getting more or less weight. And isn't that what we want from belt squats? Using an optimal stance, or at least doing more than one for muscle biasing plus easy recoverable volume? Furthermore, you can stand anywhere on the platform, which changes the direction of resistance. By being close to the bar, it's like doing a normal squat, and by being on the edge, it's essentially a pendulum belt squat, which hammers the quads like no other. And these are best played with by swapping in different belts. For a straight up and down motion, use a shorter belt, and for squatting at an angle, use the Bells of Steel belt that comes with the machine. Lastly, let's examine stability. Good hypertrophy movements are stable, and the DIY belt squat falls short here. The weights swing a lot, and you'll waste a lot of energy balancing. This also holds true when holding onto the rack or bar. It's just not smooth unless you're doing dead stop reps or cheating with much more arms to create stability. Therefore, force production in the legs isn't as high proportional to what's being lifted. And that's where the machine comes into play. The weight is always moving in a stable, fixed plane. So you can explode with maximum effort and never worry about anything else. Just strain, and as far as the hands are concerned, they'll be helping less since you won't get jolts of instability. They're just there to guide your torso angles and to properly go beyond failure, which is easier to do with the machine. And by the way, if you don't want to use your hands, it's still stable, whereas the DIY version is absolutely not. Overall, 
You can expect crazier pumps and contractions with better technique, 100% guaranteed. At any rate, it should be clear that machine bell squats are the definitive way of doing them. So how about I highlight some of the specifics of this Bells of Steel one. First of all, it's heavy duty 11 gauge steel with black powder coating, has six bushings for smooth lifting and weighs 264 pounds. So it's a high quality beast piece that's not going to rust with practically infinite loading potential in the sense that 99% of serious lifters will never max it out or even come close. What's also exclusive is the inclusion of band pegs, which I didn't install on mine, but is definitely a huge plus for modifying the strength curve, especially for those who train conjugate. In addition, the machine isn't massive. The base is 35 and a half inches wide with the overall length and width only being 51 by 52 inches. Plus, the plate pegs can be mounted on top, which saves a ton of space. Just to say, my home gym is pretty packed. Yeah, this belt squat fits perfectly in the corner. It doesn't intrude on my filming or other exercises done within close proximity. Lastly, on the topic of affordability, it's a good 1.5 to 2.5 times less than the competitors for similar features and quality, making the Bells of Steel Bell Squat one of, if not the best, budget options available. There's less footprint and money invested without compromising usability. Overall, anyone who owns this Bell Squat will be exceptionally happy, just like me. I love using it, and the leg gains I'm acquiring are impressive. Also, as a bonus, you can do other exercises like split squats, rows, shrugs, and tricep extensions, all of which will continue to be shown in my training videos. So it's multi-use and really adds a lot to your training. Plus, you'll look forward to your workouts. And with that said, this concludes my review. I hope you learned a lot about bell squats, and if you have any more questions about the exercise, ask away and I'll be sure to help you out. So enjoy growing those tree trunks, and I'll see you next time.